What's up guys? Today I want to share with you a process alternate than doing. You see me do repair work on these. We do a lot of Bondo, painting, priming. There's a lot of times where um, a better alternative, quicker, is going to be putting actual laminate on it. Now for Mica, which most people are familiar with, is basically just a brand. But this is a laminate side that you would see on countertops and stuff like that. A lot of you are familiar with this process. But I'm just going to show you my method of how I do it. You still have to do all the body work, so the edges are imperative that they be repaired because the laminate is very thin. Let me get a piece for you. The laminate is probably only a 32nd of an inch, so it's very thin. So it needs support underneath. So if you had a big void here, and this was laminated, you could just tap and snap it right off. So you do need to do the proper repair work on the outer edges. Not only the outer edges, but anywhere really. The only thing you're saving is the priming process and the painting process. And at the end of the day, you actually get a really nice finish. Now I've done some of my cabinets where I can get pretty close to this. But, you know, there's a lot of material involved and time to get it to that point. And a lot of people don't have a spray booth and a facility to do that. But we still do all that same process on the front. Now, some cabs, we could remove everything and take this off and do it separately. You've seen other guys do that. In this particular situation, we took the coin doors off. We did all the body work and we sprayed just the front and the back. So if you look at the back, the back has been painted as well. This is just dust. But we did the repair work and the roof. Now, we do all the body work, like I said, and we pulled the original decals off, because this was a Konami, actually a Midway cab. So we pulled off, this is a, a Midway, or yeah, Midway World Tour, right? Rampage. Rampage World Tour. So that's what was on here. So we removed all that, we did the repair work, and then we stuck the laminate on there. So I'm going to show you my process of how we do that. So as far as adhesive goes, there are several different brands out there, but this is what my local distributor uses, Wilson Art. I bought this in a five gallon container because it's a little more inexpensive the, the higher amount you buy. Um, you can get this in gallons, you know. They even say that you could spray it, but you don't want to reduce it. So I recommend rolling it, and I use a foam roller. Okay. These are the rollers that I use and I recommend. These are able to resist high solvents because a lot of rollers are actually come apart. This stuff is very aggressive and if you don't use the, type, the proper type of roller, it'll actually eat the roller as you're using it. So I get these from a distributor, but you possibly, I think, can get these from a Home Depot or Lowe's. It don't have to be this brand, but this is what I use. These are a short nap, eighth inch foam roller. Okay, so that's what I do for application. And we're going to go through that process as we're doing it so you can see how I use it. Um, we use this. We use this cutter. This is made for glass and laminate. It takes several passes with this and you'll eventually cut through it. Also what you're going to want is a router bit. This is just a straight bit. Alright, so this is the router bit I use. It has a bearing on the top and this is actually going to follow the edge of the, the panel. And that's why it's imperative that you have a nice edge to follow. So when this is following that panel, if you have 
bad areas, every little spot is going to show up. So you do want to consider that on your body work and your outside edge. One nice thing about doing this process is there's lots of options. Now if you go to your local, you're not going to be able to get these types of things at probably Home Depot or Lowe's, but if you deal with a supplier, someone that does cabinet work or any kind of panel supplier, they will offer or they'll supply you with one of these that you can have all these different options. Like you can see this, this is going to match almost perfectly to Donkey Kong. Um, I have a blue in here that looks exactly like the blue for, um, what was the title? Journey. Journey, yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of wood panel stuff that we wouldn't really use in this industry, but there's a lot of solid colors too. So these are nice to have, definitely as a reference. This might have been it right there. And you can also get this stuff in different levels of gloss. Like this has a slight texture. They have a smooth, high finish gloss. So, you know, consider that on your project of what you're doing. The next thing you're going to want to do, a lot of guys will get wood dowels, but I went with PVC. And the reason I went with PVC is I felt like these are easier to clean. These are five foot tall. I got them in a bundle. I think there were 10 in a bundle. I use about 12 to 14 for an entire side of a cabinet. And these are one inch in diameter, five foot tall. Now, these are going to be laid down and you're going to see that process so that you can set the panel on it before it touches down. And another thing about going with PVC versus wood, when I price these out, this comes out to be about $1.30, $1.40 per piece. And the wood, believe it or not, was almost $2 to $3 or $3.50 a piece, which, you know, yes, they got a millet and all, but for what we're doing, this is better. And also the wood ones will have a tendency to warp. So these overall, for me, I think they're a much better process. So another main thing that you're going to want to consider is ventilation. I'm used to a lot of paints and I smell stuff all the time, but this stuff is brutal. I mean, I was literally getting dizzy and a headache from this. So I'm going to be applying it with this mask. You don't want to do it outside because the breeze and the temperature, everything is going to affect how quickly this stuff dries. So consider that. I definitely would never want to do it out in the direct sunlight. Um, if you do, you're going to have to work much faster. This is showing 20 to 30 minute open time. And that's after you apply two coats. I apply two coats to the cabinet and I apply two coats to the actual laminate. And they have to separate from each other for 20, I'd say about 20 minutes, start getting your stuff together and getting ready. Because by the time you lay everything on there and go, that could be another five minutes. You don't want to go over the top for way too long because it says if it's not tacky enough, then you're going to not have as good of a bond. So. Let's get started on the process. All right, so now we're at a point where we're gonna start to get ready and cut the laminate and put it on. But what I wanted to show you was, right here we have the body work that was done in this corner, it was done in this corner. Any edges and gouges like I discussed earlier, we repaired, which this one didn't have a whole, whole lot, so it wasn't too bad. And we removed the old image from the side. And by the way, this particular art was unbelievably a pain in the ass to get off. It, it just was breaking every little square inches. We heat it up, we roll it off, but it really was a challenge. So I don't bother painting any of this because obviously it's going to be completely covered. But I do spray the edge black when I'm painting the front. That way, you know, I have black paint along the edge. But I have a little bit of overspray from when I painted this. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to sand this and just rough this up. The rest we already had done, so this is all fine. That's really the only area at this moment that I need to worry about. And I believe I have 40 grit. No, no this is 80. So 80, 80 sandpaper. I'm actually going to blow this off. We'll get my airline. Ok, 
Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure, and you wanna make it oversized. You don't have to maybe go as, as much as I do, but I like to do two inches oversized. So I'm going to go to 40 inches wide, and it's just gonna be this whole thing. So you are gonna have a, a little bit of a waste factor, but you know, you just gotta deal with that. And then over here, I'm gonna to go to 77. So I'll have two inches to play with on both sides. That way you don't have to be so precise when you're laying that down. So now we're gonna come over here and cut the laminate. All right, if you had a light color laminate, you could use a, a regular pencil or a pen. I'm just using, it's called a Stabilo, it's a wax pencil, and it happens to be white. So what I'm gonna do is first, we're gonna cut the length. Actually, let's do, yeah, let's do the length first. So I know I want 77 inches. And you do wanna cut this on the face, face side. I just have a big piece of cardboard underneath. You don't have to have it, but this stuff is so flimsy that you really kind of need it on the floor or a table big enough that you can actually lay this on. Now this is just a regular metal T-square and the only reason I have this plastic on here, it actually works out well, but I use this for my scanner. And then we're gonna cut it. Now what I like to do is just work in small areas at a time. So see that took about six passes to get that to cut with a lot of pressure. Now one thing I made a mistake with one time, make sure it's cut through because I tried to snap it up and actually ripped and split into the good side. If you are gonna try to break it, you wanna break it downwards. big I would say because you never know on a cabinet that's a small area you could use this okay the next dimension I went with is 40 inches so like I said I'm gonna have two inches extended on each side Now you could actually just cut this manually without a blade, without a metal object like this, but it, that stuff is pretty hard to cut through so it's nice to have that guide, but it's not imperative.
we're going to blow this off so I can flip it over. Now a good precaution to be sure, I would lay this on here just to be sure that you're going to have enough. Alright, so you see here I have quite a bit of overlap all the way around, plenty. So I know I'm good. I'm just saying if you're new to it, unless you're doing multiple cabinets and you're unsure of your dimensions, just check it. It takes a couple seconds. Alright, if you look here, it says allow approximately 20 to 30 minutes to dry after applying and before bonding. So basically, after you put the glue on both sides. Alright, so we brought it up here so I can roll the glue down because my knee's been popping pretty bad. So, what I want to make sure is that I don't have any big debris or any dirt. Because if there's like a big chunk of dirt, you'll actually see it standing up in between the laminate. This thing's pretty good. So there's a lot of different ways you can apply this. You can get a regular traditional roller pan, pour it in there, roll it. I've seen guys open this up, dip the whole roller in it. What I'm going to do is just pour it directly onto the surface. One thing I'm not doing because I'm talking is wearing my mask, which I would recommend you have one. You just got to get a feel for how much you would really need for coverage wise. Kind of just a guesstimate. And the more porous this surface is, the more it's going to absorb. You can see it already webbing up. That's going to do it for the first coat. Then I'm going to hit this. Then we're going to go back. And you really want to make sure you have a good amount on the outer edges because that's going to be the most local spot that would start to be failure or, you know, peeling. The nice stuff about this glue, if it gets on the edge and gets on the face, it comes off very easy. Once it dries, it just rolls off. So you don't have to be too worried about that.
That was just enough. Try to roll it out somewhere. You don't want the big clumps anywhere. But this isn't like paint. You're not trying to make it perfectly smooth. You see how much it's tacking up. All right, now we're gonna go right back and do a second coat on here. All right, we're gonna do coat number two. Size the edges a lot. This stuff really absorbs the glue a lot because it's so porous. All right, that's good for that. We're going to go back to this panel. Now the temperature in your shop, the temperature outside, the humidity, all are going to vary on the drying time of this. Right now with the temperatures we've been having, it's about 50 degrees outside, low humidity. I'm trying to do it in around 20 minutes. That's it. So now I'm going to set my timer and we'll be back in 20 minutes. All right, so we're about 20 minutes into it and you can see it's it's sticky, but I'm not it's not webbing and I'm not bringing up glue with my hand. So that's when you know it's ready to go. One of the things I want to discuss too when we remove decals or anything from this fiberboard the way they have it, it really brings up a lot of the the surface with it and it makes it very difficult to create another smooth surface because they almost coat this with it like a shellac. So unless you're going to do that again, when you try to sand or do any body work, it's, it's very hard because you're actually sanding away this wood product and it makes it hard to get a nice smooth surface. So by using the laminate, we're back to a nice one finished surface. So now we have these plastics that I talked about. I'm going to space them out about six, eight inches apart. 
And you don't have to worry about these sticking like you would think, oh my God, are they gonna glue down? They're not going to. And you want them long enough, you see here it's long enough so I can reach and pull them out from underneath of the laminate. They'll have to be rocket science here. Now you can do this with one person, but if you have two people, it's just that much easier. You can just roughly lay it on there. It doesn't matter at this point because it's not sticking to anything. And I can move this. I know I have enough overlap just by looking underneath. And that's it. Now we're going to start in the center and we're going to work our way out. Doesn't matter which way you want to go. Let me go that way. Once this stuff touches itself, that's it, it's done. You don't have a real shop unless you have dog prints on your surface. <laughs> now you want to be careful because there's hanging over. You don't want to lean too heavy on the end because you could break it at this point still. See, it's a lot shorter right here. It's, it's coming in, so just keep that in mind. going to use the router. All right, so the way I had this adjusted, I don't know if we have a piece of three-quarter plywood. Do you have something here in three-quarter? Well, anyway, it's going to follow. It's going to take about the center of the wood, and it's just going to cut off. So it's following the wood and shearing this off. anything hanging which is going to be below this so that that is rolling cutting off the excess
Now, as you see here, one of the things I like to do is I'll just run over it, the whole entire edge a second time around, and that'll clean off any spots that I might have missed. I just going over, like I said, to double check that I didn't have any spots. Okay, so from the bearing rolling on the wood, it takes away a little bit of the paint. So what I'll do is I'll just go back and you can look at this one here. Okay, after I'm done, I already went and touched this up so you can see. Now one of the things that you gotta consider, here's an old T-molding. You've now increased the width slightly. So depending on you see it almost will look like a board that was swelled. See how you have a little bit of this edge? So they do sell oversized T-molding and then you would cut it back down. They have a cutter to compensate for this distance. It didn't get wider here, but it does get wider here. Now the, again, depending on how particular you are, if this was black T-molding and you put this on here, you could let that slide but a lot of guys are not gonna want that edge, so you're gonna have to go with, you actually sell a wider T-molding for this purpose. So it's gonna determine what method you wanna go with. But that's something to consider. Let's say this was going back on here. I could paint this blue to match this and get away with it in some circumstances. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope this is helpful for some of you guys trying to do this process on your own. Till next time, see you then. All right, guys. <laughs> well, that's how the cookies crumble. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Do you remember that show? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm still going to stop laughing. <laughs>